So in this video I'm going to be showing you how to construct a new antenna that I've been working on probably for the best part of eight or nine months and believe it or not it actually came from me trying to develop a turnstile antenna for the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum and uh, this is what it ended up um, turning out as it ended up turning out as a circular polarized antenna and for want of a better word I'm actually calling these a Celtic knot antenna. Now in the video I show you how to make a three blade antenna but uh, making the four blade antenna is relatively uh, simple you're just actually adding another element to it but I do show you in the video after this how to make a four blade one for the 2.4 gigahertz so both uh, methods are exactly the same it's just the measurements that are slightly different so to start making this antenna we're going to need uh, three pieces of copper wire at 52 millimeters long and uh, the best way to actually cut these to make sure they're all the same length is to use a straw now uh, cut a straw off at 52 millimeters exactly and then we can actually use that straw to cut our pieces of copper wire for our antenna so if you get your straw that you cut off at 52 millimeters and your copper wire and if you hold the copper wire in the straw like that and then just butt up your wire cutters on top of the straw so it's laying flat on top of that straw and snip then you've got a piece of copper wire in there that's exactly 52 millimeters and you can do that with all three pieces and that way you're not fiddling around measuring them and then uh, because you're measuring by hand you'll probably struggle to get them all exactly the same length but this way you should get them all perfect so to make the next bend what I've got here is a uh, straw again and this time it's cut down to 6.5 millimeters and we're going to do the exact same method we did to actually get the lengths of these to actually put uh, a right angle bend on the ends here but uh, instead of using some wire cutters we're obviously going to use some uh, needle nose pliers with a nice flat side to them so we can get that measurement perfect. So again same method and these needle nose pliers you've seen these before in uh, other videos they're nice and flat so uh, try and find a pair like this they're only cheap and then what we can do is rest the actual needle nose pliers on top of that straw and then if you pull it up the distance here is exactly 6.5 millimeters so what we can do now is put a right angle bend in there and then we can do the same to the other side Now for the other side we actually want the right angle bend going in the opposite direction so try and keep this as straight as possible and put your bend in the opposite direction. So you've actually got a piece of wire that now looks like that. So now we're going to actually put the curve bends into the uh, antenna now and uh, what you actually need to find is something with a outside diameter of around 10 millimeters. This uh, barrel pen here is uh, perfectly 10 millimeters on its thickest part on this main part of the body so this is what I'm going to use. Now you want to keep all of the elements uniform so you do this by actually starting out with your bend make sure that the left hand side is actually pointing upwards and the right hand side is pointing downwards. You can do it either way but just make sure all three are exactly the same. So we bend it around the pen nice and slowly getting a really nice bend in there with no kinks and then here you actually want to make sure that they join up exactly so your bend is in the middle of the element like that so now that we've got the elements to this stage I'm going to put them to one side for the moment and now work on the actual coax for this antenna so I'm going to be using this semi-rigid coax for these antennas and I've only just started using this quite recently and I'm really impressed with uh, how good it is and it's it's only cheap it's uh, I think it's about three pound a meter off eBay and the connectors as well they're quite different you don't crimp these ones on you actually solder them on so it makes it a lot easier you don't have to go out buying uh, expensive crimpers just to actually crimp on the ends for your uh, antennas and uh, I came across this because uh, Bruce showcased uh, some of this on his uh, channel uh, the RC Muller Reviews channel and uh, I'm really quite impressed with this I've got to order some more of it so what I've done I cut a length of the actual rigid coax 60 millimeters long 
and then I uh, soldered on an SMA connector to the bottom here so now we've actually got a length that's uh, probably about 55 millimeters long so that gives us plenty of room there because we're going to take up about 10 millimeters at the top here with the actual element itself you can make this a little longer if you want to it depends on what kind of application you want to put it on and what I'll do I'll put a link in the description to Bruce's channel where he actually shows you how to solder these SMA connectors onto this uh, rigid semi rigid coax here because he does a really good job of it so I'm not going to repeat it here but uh, it really is simple now next up what we've got to do is actually score down three times all evenly around the diameter of the outer braid of this coax here so we can bend it back on itself so we can actually solder one half of our elements onto and the other half of the element onto the top through the center connector of the coax so this outer braid actually needs to be cut down and bent back on itself and uh, you actually want to aim for around 10 millimeters so put cuts in 10 millimeters deep into this coax and then we can bend them around and try and keep it all nice and uniform so I've bent them back on the cells like that and I've uh, gone round and got them all spaced out nice and uniform so it's roughly 10 millimeters deep and uh, what you can do now is I've got this little hole in my board here and actually just use that again so we can get them all nice and straight and uh, what I can do now is actually just trim these off because we don't want all this length here and uh, fill a little bit of solder in there and it gives us a little solder cup in order to actually solder our element onto so it just makes for a more stable antenna so what I've gone ahead and done here is I've cut a piece of the straw four millimeters long and I'm going to use that as a guide to cut away the top part of this dielectric in order for us to uh, solder the top part of our elements onto and you want to keep it about four millimeters five millimeters maximum because if you start going uh, beyond five millimeters with this particular design of the antenna it uh, actually it's SWR starts to climb and that will impact the performance of this antenna so I've gone ahead and I've cut and shaped uh, that coax that we pulled back and um, I've also uh, put some uh, tin in there so look, they are like little solder cups now and uh, I'm now getting ready to actually solder or tin up the ends of the elements but I uh, also wanted to show you these which makes it a lot easier cutting and shaping something so small these are actually nail clippers that I got from my local chemist for I think I paid three pounds for them and they really are good I've had these for about a year now and they're not blunt at all I haven't, I haven't had to sharpen them up yet but uh, they're really good for getting into small areas like this so what we want to do now is actually bend our elements so we can solder them into place now what we want to do is solder this part in here but we need to bend this around to solder it on the top here so if you get your element and slowly push them apart like so so we've got it looking like that just put a little bit more space in between them here what we can actually do now is solder it in like so and once it's soldered in we can just nip that a little bit more to get a bit of a bend on it but hopefully you can see that that's what they're going to all look like like that so I've just got to do that with the other two elements now we can start soldering them in place so I'm now ready to solder on my elements and what I'm going to do is solder all the bottom legs on first just go around just line up the top there where you're actually going to solder it to and just uh, a little bit of heat on the bottom here and because we've already tinned then a little bit of heat should be all it needs and just go around and solder all the bottom ones on first So now what I can do is line all these pins up correctly and then solder them all in one go and then uh, I can actually go in then and straighten all these uh, petals of the element out if you like just get them all nice and uniform. So looking at the top I uh, haven't soldered them in place they're just actually resting um, on each other at the moment so a little bit of heat and a little bit of solder and then we can solder them all in one go.
so looking down at it, it doesn't want much straightening out but I just want to nip these in a little bit more just to get it uniform go around make sure it's all nice and straight So when you look directly down at it, you should see those loops and they should be equal to each other. So all that's left to do now is to give it some paint. I like to paint all my 5.8 gigahertz antennas white so I can tell the difference straight away. But um, unfortunately, there's no way of me being able to test this to show you how good it is um, in the real world. But uh, if you do build one, then uh, let us know in the comments uh, how you found it. I am going to send a few of these off to people I know who do uh, this uh, as a hobby and uh, also I am um, looking at starting it myself uh, next year as well and to be fair not just uh, because of the flying expert uh, part of the uh, hobby I'm uh, really interested in how far you can actually push it um, actually distance wise with uh, the 5.8 gigahertz and the 2.4 gigahertz with the different antennas that I make just to see how well they perform in the real world but uh, like I said I'm sending a few of these off to people I know are, who are uh, into the hobby and uh, hopefully I'll be able to feed back to you to uh, say how good this is but uh, when connecting up to the analyzer and uh, all the theory behind it it uh, should perform rather well so yeah let us know how you get on and uh, drop a comment if you've got any questions and um, Part 2 should be up straight after this one. I'm going to upload them both together side by side. So part 2 is uh, 2.4 GHz and it's going to have uh, four elements to the antenna. So uh, hopefully you'll watch that one. And The differences are just the uh, measurements in the copper wire. So if I show you how to build a four um, element uh, one of these antennas, you should be able to build a four element one in the 5.8 as well. No problem. So something that I forgot to mention in the video is that the uh, Celtic Knot antennas, the 2.4 GHz and the 5.8 GHz are all left hand turn. So they're all left hand polarised antennas and uh, what I didn't mention is if you want to change the actual uh, polarity of it, make it into a right hand turned antenna. In the video you notice I tell you to make sure that all your elements when you bend them are this uh, left hand leg is actually pointing upwards but if you want to turn it the other way around to create a right hand turn antenna all you have to do is that and then continue to bend your antenna and if you do all your bends like that for your elements then it will actually turn out as a right hand turn circular polarized antenna.